Hey guys, it's Alex and today I wanted to bring uh, another video, uh, probably answering some questions that you guys have had and then um, one question in particular uh, when I released my last video, someone asked that I thought was a good subject to talk about and something that might be worth my while is, should you supercharge a GT350? Now, that, that question has been um, answered, not really answered, it, it's been so much debate about whether you should or shouldn't, why you should or shouldn't, and I'm going to tell you why I think it's a good thing to supercharge a GT350. Now, if you buy a Shelby GT350 for the sheer fact of value, meaning I don't want to, you know, have it lose value, I want to just buy it and drive it to get some ice cream once in a while and then not really, you know, put miles on it, you know, saving the pussy for imagine imagine you get yourself a really hot girlfriend oh she's smoking hot she's a little expensive you got to take her out to eat all the time you got to buy her shoes all the fucking time and then you never have sex with her because you don't want that pussy to get ruined it's the same thing as if you were to buy a high performance car and not drive it to its ability like a gt500 or a shelby gt350 oh i'm gonna save it for the next guy so that the value is still high yeah, I'm gonna get myself a girlfriend and not bang her so that the next guy can really enjoy the shit out of her. Makes no fucking sense to me. So, if you buy a GT350, the first thing you're gonna notice is it has really long gears. First gear, you can go like 50 in first gear. It revs really high, it handles really good, stops really good. After about a week or so, you will start saying to yourself, this thing is severely underpowered. Why? Because it handles so good, it's so nimble, the brakes are so good that it can probably take another 200 horse to the wheels to make it fun again. But you're going to think about the flat plane crank. Oh my God, the flat plane crank's going to go flying off the bitch when I put a supercharger on it. Okay, uh, the first round when I worked for Lund Racing back in late 2015, uh, I remember uh, Lethal Performance was the first to put a supercharger on their GT350. And I made fun of the fact that people were losing their shit, absolutely losing it, because they were like, oh, you ruined the car, oh my god, dude, I can't believe that car is shit now. And a lot of people started saying some dumb shit, like, oh, the value, oh, yeah, the YOLO stuff is coming up, but remember, YOLO is a character, and uh, he makes fun of you guys. Um, so, hold on for a second. I had some noise in the background I had to take care of. So... And come come to find out that that car on like 12 PSI on E85, it literally has this. It has a 2.9 front feed Whipple kit. I think it has a 3.75 pulley, maybe a 3.5. And, um, and it has dual fuel pump voltage boosters because the GT350s have two pumps. And it has uh, a set of ID1000s. And that son of a bitch made like 830 rubble horsepower on like 12 PSI chilling like it's conservatives conservative as fuck and people were like whoa it's not gonna do it for long it's 2018 that car is still out there ticking i don't know if he drives it much or not but it's still out there no issues subsequently you have had people put pro chargers other whipple kits turbos on gt350s and more whipples i know that lund racing for a fact because you know, I see it in the system all the time, has supercharged, has tuned supercharged, Whipple supercharged, GT350s many times. And how many times have you heard of a crank failure, key, key word, a crank failure directly correlated to the fact that it is supercharged? None. Crickets. Absolute crickets. So, therein lies talking with engineers. When I went to SEMA, I spoke to an engineer and he was like, oh, you really don't want to supercharge a GT350. That crank is not designed to take any axial or lateral or, you know, whatever load or radial load. It gives you all these uh, fancy words to try to confuse it when at the end of the day, uh, he has never done it. Okay. Theory and application are two different things. I have a lot of people that tell me, this isn't going to work because I think this is going to happen. Then I do it and it's fine because I apply it. I don't just theorize about it and they shut the fuck up real quick. So how many of you guys work in the millwright field, uh, you know, the trades, and then you, you, hell, car mechanics. 
you look at a car and you go, what fucking engineer thought of this shit? What idiot, retard, engineer thought of doing this and this or that? I bet you say that to yourself every freaking day of your life if you work in the trees, if you work with your hands. You said, this is just so stupid. I mean, this, this makes no sense. It's almost like trying to reach that third starter bolt on the Coyote. It's, you know, you need 15 extensions and get it from the back. So, just because an engineer says it's something you shouldn't do, in my opinion, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Now, that being said, does it cause more of a load? Sure. But I've heard of more Coyote cranks snapping off based on a certain brand supercharger than a GT350. Okay? Now, GT350s, because of their high compression, they're going to love good fuel. So throw E85, boost at it about 12 PSI or 10 PSI, and that thing's going to make 700 wheel. And what's going to happen? That nimble car that stops really well, handles real well, now becomes, in my opinion, balanced because it has the horsepower to actually get out and have some fun with it as opposed to just, you know, being a car that is a little underpowered but has insanely great brakes, insanely great suspension. I guarantee that Ford somewhere out there supercharged a GT350 as a test mule and said, this thing is badass, but we can't warranty it for shit because who's like that guy, Alex, is going to go out there and do stupid shit with it and we have to cover motors, transmissions, we, we can't do it. I think Ford didn't do it because of the warranty aspect as opposed to, it's going to snap the crank. So... If you have a GT350, look, if I was to buy a GT350, sorry about the focus, this camera's a little too smart for its own good. If I was to buy a GT350, which look, I, I consider it, I think they're great cars, they handle good, they stock good, uh, it retains value, um, but it needs 200 rear wheel more horsepower than it currently has. So I would supercharge it or turbocharge it in a heartbeat. I don't care that it has a flat plane crank, I'm gonna get it done, period. So that's my opinions on supercharging a GT350. Let engineers tell you whatever they want. At the end of the day, I don't think they apply any of their knowledge to actual, um, you know, supercharging a GT350. I don't think they've done it with all the superchargers that are out there. I don't think Ford goes out there and buys a Pro Charger, buys a Whipple, puts it on a car and tests the shit out of it. Um, and if they do, they probably do it for warranty purposes, not necessarily can it be done for a, sustain, for a certain period of time purposes. So. Should you supercharge your GT350? Hell yes. Just keep boost at a moderate level. Get with a company that can tune it properly. That's my opinion on supercharging a GT350. Go ahead and do it if you want to do it. It'll actually become a well-balanced, high horsepower car that has great suspension, stops the whole nine yards. I'm not one of these guys that you know cares about resale value because I'm not saving the pussy for the next guy. It's going to be tore up. By the time it gets to the next dude, plain and simple. That's how I roll. So that's my opinions on supercharging a GT350. That's the main question that I get asked a lot on my YouTube channel. So hopefully that answered some of your questions. And again, this is all my opinion. Sure enough, three of you guys are probably going to go say, well, YOLO told me to do it and I put it on my car and it blew up. Well, hey, you're the first, plain and simple. That's how, that's how it is. So, you know, it's my opinion. If I got my hands on a GT350, you damn skippy I'm supercharging it like immediately because after owning a car like that for one week, you're gonna see how severely underpowered it is for the mods that, 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 that it has and how it came with from Ford. So, as always, thanks for listening. I'll keep the videos coming. Talk to you later.